Seeing my comment section going like, Hey Mo, when's your next anime a minute? Hey Mo, where are the anime a minutes, you slack? Hey Mo, I'm gonna eat that juicy ass of yours. You want an anime a minutes? <sighs> I got you. Whoa. 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 In the beginning of Bleach, we got Ichigo Kurosaki, a purposeless protagonist. One night, Ichigo was just chilling, thinking about hentai, and that's when he meets Rukia, who randomly sneaks into his room. That's when Ichigo is like, please don't rape me. But we all know Rukia wasn't about that, and explains that she's a soul reaper, and that Ichigo is no regular human, because he can see her in spirits. Just then, a hollow attacks, taking Ichigo's sister, Karin. Rukia is then all like, I got this, and saves Karin, and shortly after, the hollow goes for Ichigo, but then Rukia uses her secret technique, the human shield, defending Ichigo from the hollow's ferocious attack. Now that Rukia's health has depleted near to zero, she then says, Yo, if you want to live, you gotta take my soul reaper powers. And Ichigo replies with, Say no more. Accepting the powers. I, Strawberry Kurosaki, now have purpose in this anime. And so, he goes for the slash. Taking out that hollow with ease. Moving forward, two soul reapers from the soul society, Renji and Byakuya, pull up to the world of the living and are like, Hey Rukia, you have pulled one of the biggest taboos a soul reaper can ever make, and that is transferring your powers over to a human. So for that, you're gonna die. And so they end up trying to cut that bitch up, but soon after, the main character, of course, comes to the rescue, but ends up getting his ass beat and catching a few L's. <laughs> Afterwards, Rukia, Renji, and Byakuya head to the Soul Society to perform a proper execution on Rukia, leaving Ichigo in critical condition. By the way, Rukia was the one who technically saved Ichigo by accepting her fate and suggesting that they leave the main character behind to bleed out and die. Ha! Did they really think the main character could die by simply bleeding out? Moving forward, Ichigo gets nurse droid by Kisuke Udahara, and that's when Udahara is like, You want to enter this Soul Society? I got you if you come to my basement, big boy. So for this operation to rescue Rukia, Ichigo is joined by Brock, Misty, and Max. Okay, I need to stop with these goddamn Pokemon references. So for this operation, Ichigo is joined by his friends, Orihime, Uriyu, and Chad, who also possess some type of supernatural power. Orihime has Shinshin Rika, Chad has Burasu Derecha de Gigante, and Uriyu has Quincy powers, which is basically a nice variant to what Wind Archers have in Maple Story. So given the portal by Urihara, all four, <coughs> I mean five, including this cat, all enter the Soul Society. Well, that gotta hurt. While moving through the Soul Society, they end up bumping into this bitch, who gives them transportation, or I mean a cannon, to shoot them into the Serite, where the Soul Reapers live, and most importantly, where Rukia is located. As they enter the Serite, they all end up getting split up into pairs. Since the Soul Reapers were ordered to get rid of the intruders, Ichigo encounters a Soul Reaper named Ikaku, and... Easy! As a result for the victory, Ichigo manages to extract the information on the location where Rukia is being executed. And so he heads out, but as he's making his way towards Rukia, he is intercepted by Renji and had no other choice but to fight. And as a result... So this is when Renji explains his backstory with Rukia, basically going like, Rukia is my childhood friend, it's all my fault Rukia is getting executed. And after concluding his story about Rukia and him back in the good old days, he then requests that Ichigo goes ahead to save Rukia. And so, once again, Ichigo heads towards the direction where Rukia is being held, but as expected, another Soul Reaper cuts him off, and so this Soul Reaper is named Kenpachi, who's HUNGRY for a good fight. The fight concludes with a stalemate, with both Ichigo and Kenpachi laying in critical condition. But no worries, the main character manages to survive. Wow, what a fucking surprise. Thanks to this cat- Bruh. Yeah, well by the way, this cat girl's name is Yoriichi, and with that out of the way, Yoriichi brings Ichigo to special training grounds to train him to obtain his Bankai, basically the level 3 POWERS of his Zanpakuto, or in other words, his sword. After several episodes of getting an ass beating, guess who unlocks Bankai? Kimi Wakimi Takeshita! So with Ichigo having a mastery with Bankai, he's then like, it's time to rescue Rukia. So just as Rukia is about to get executed, Ichigo comes in clutch and sets Rukia free. He then tosses Rukia to Renji so Rukia can get the hell out of there while he takes care of the other Soul Reapers. But that's when Byakuya comes in like, oh no you don't. So with no other choice, Ichigo releases his... Bankai. Ah! 
and he ends up winning the fight by destroying Byakuya's Zanpak toe. This is when Byakuya is like, The only reason why I allowed Rukia, my sister-in-law, to be executed is because I come from a noble family who honors the law and must set an example for other soul reapers. But since you have defeated me, Bye bye! So with that being said, Byakuya has deserted his task to pursue Rukia, and so Rukia is pretty much off the hook at this point. But wait! Did you really think it was all gonna end here? Think again! Because this is when three Soul Reapers, Aizen, Gin, and Kaname, arrive at Rukia and Renji's location. Aizen then gets his hand and shoves that shit through Rukia's chest, taking the Hogyoku that Urahara had implanted and hid inside of her. This item is able to transfer Soul Reaper powers to Hollows and vice versa. Shortly after, Aizen, Gin, and Kaname flee the Soul Society to wake up Mundo, a dimension that resides between the world of the living and the soul society, and is also the habitat for hollows. And by the way, they might be future villains later on, wink wink. So after that incident, the soul reapers no longer view Ichigo Uduyu, Chad, or Orihime as threats. And also, Orihime, Chad, and Uduyu did have their own fights, but really, if it didn't include the true main character, does it really matter? And so, they return to the world of the living, on good terms with the soul reaper. But right before doing so, Ichigo is gifted a substitute soul reaper badge, basically a badge allowing Ichigo to go into soul reaper mode without using soul candy like he always has been doing and so moving forward we got oh my god a filler arc so moving past that atrocious filler arc ichigo meets shinji who is a visor and if you don't know what a visor it is too bad just kidding. So basically, a visor is a soul reaper who has acquired hollow powers. And by the way, Ichigo has shown hints of having this type of power, but it really wasn't relevant till now. So with Ichigo technically being qualified as a visor, Shinji is like, hey man, you should leave the soul reapers and join my squad. But Ichigo briskly declines. Moving forward to Arankar arriving in Katakuta Town, Ukiora, and Yami. And what is an Arankar, you ask? Well, to answer your question, it's a hollow that has removed its mask and obtained powers similar to that of a soul reaper. Oh, I really wonder who's responsible for this. This is one Chad and Orihime pull up after sensing their spiritual levels over nine. Oh, hell nah. You ain't gonna finish that dead ass meme. Well, after Orihime and Chad sense the Arankar's spiritual pressure, they rush to the location and engage in battle. And it looks like Chad takes a fat L. Just as Orihime is about to get striked, you already know the main character is gonna appear. <laughs> was a bit unexpected. So this is when Urahara and Yoriichi arrive at the scene, and pretty much scares the two Arankar off. Or maybe not scare them off, because Ukiyora says they were sent by Aizen to gauge Ichigo's strength. And since Ichigo was seen as trash to them, there was no use staying around. With Ichigo feeling like a weak piece of shit, he goes to meet up with the visor, asking if they can teach him how to control his holification. And they're like, all you gotta do is join! And with Ichigo being Ichigo, he's like, nah, I'm just here to use you guys. And so a fight breaks out, leading Ichigo to release his untamed holification, and choking this bitch out. But soon after, the visor restrains Ichigo and stops his rampage. After seeing Ichigo's holification potential, they then decide to help Ichigo get a grip of his power. Moving forward, Ukiyora was ordered by Aizen to capture Orihime because he had an interest in her powers, also threatening her friend's lives if she didn't comply. Ukiyora then gives Orihime a 12 hour period before bringing her to Wikamundo, allowing her to say goodbye to one person. She is then instructed to wear this bracelet, which makes her invisible to everyone but the Arankar. And so she says goodbye to Ichigo before being taken prisoner by Aizen. Moving forward, the Soul Reapers inform Ichigo about Orihime and concludes that she has sided with the Arankar. Car. Ichigo did not accept that, and so he gathers with Uryu and Chad, and heads to Waco Mundo through the garganta that Urahara has opened for them. On their arrival, they meet three good-natured Arankar, Nel, Peshe, and Dondichaka. Shortly after, Rukia and Renji appear. Using the Arankar's warm-looking pet, Bawa Bawa, they travel to Lost Noches, where Orihime is being held. Now that they have arrived in Lost Noches, they had no other choice but to go up against the Arankar elite forces, known as the Espada. But of course, they breeze through these fights no problem because after all, they all got that main character invincibility cloak equipped. <laughs> Never mind. Moving forward, the Espada Grimjow sneaks Orihime out of her prison to heal Ichigo. Or maybe not heal, more like bring back from the dead, using her power to reject reality, and basically rewind time before a certain event occurred. But the reason why Grimjow did this is to get a proper death match with Ichigo. Because the last time they faced each other, he was forced to retreat before finishing their fights episodes back. What's funny is that I forgot to include this detail, so I'm including it now. <laughs> and so Ichigo unleashes his holification and beats that ass easy money! And... Uh, you know there's another filler arc? What?
I said there's enough. I heard you the first time. For fuck's sake. Because these shit suck so much. I will skip them for the sake of this anime a minute. Thank me later and I will kiss you on the cheek. Shortly after defeating Grimjow, two Aronkar appear. Noitra and Tesra. And they end up picking a fight with Ichigo. And so with Ichigo being at a weakened state, he takes a fat... L. Nani? Nani? Where did Kampachi come from? Nani? Nani? Kampachi takes out Noitra? Nani? Nani? him gets captured by Naran car again? Nani? Alright, I need to stop. <laughs> well, moving forward, with many soul repairs besides Kampachi pulling up to wake Mundo, Aizen uses Bakugo number 77 to contact them, basically using Bakugo number 77 as a fucking speaker to tell them that he lured them here, closing off the gargantas that they enter here through, and essentially trapping the soul reapers in wake Mundo. With that being said, Aizen leaves wake Mundo with Gin and Kaname to Katakuta Town to create the Oaken, a key to the Soul King Palace, which requires a hundred thousand souls to create and basically Aizen's plan is to fight the Soul King to overthrow him and take his throne but I have heard that Aizen just wanted to have a good fight but I mean yeah I just saw that on the internet but hey let's move on but little did Aizen know Urahara has set up a plan to replace the real Katakuta town with the replica and to post the 13 court guard squad captains in that fake Katakuta town but as soon as Aizen arrives he already knew what's up he was like yeah th this shit is all fake and so Aizen summons his Aronkar troops and soon after the visor arrives siding with the soul reapers with the intention to take down Aizen Yo, tell me why this song makes me want to twerk. Moving forward, Ukiyora is with Orihime planning to finish her off because Aizen no longer has a purpose for her. But of course, the main character arrives at the scene once again. And so Ukiyora and Ichigo have a spicy fight, even breaking the boundaries of this goddamn dimension. Meanwhile, the 13 court guard squad captains got a lot on their plate and oh, for crying out loud, another filler arc. Yeah, I think I'm getting tired of covering these filler openings, so uh... You know what it's time for? It's time to get into the good shit. Change! Nabika nai naga sare nai yo imaka anjiru koto ni shita yu de itai no! Well, moving forward, Ichigo is still in that juicy fight with Ukiyora, pushing him to enter his full hollow form after being killed. Yeah, you heard me right. But with this form, Ichigo spreads Ukiyora's cheeks like bread and drills. Killing that bitch. But it looks like Ichigo goes down alongside with him. You know he's the main character, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> FUCKING HACKS! After recovering, Ichigo heads down to do cleanup duty and attempts to take out the Aronkar Yami. But in the midst of battle, Byakuya stops Ichigo telling him that he must return to the world of the living using the Garganta Mayuri created. And so after a bit of conflict, he goes through the Garganta with Letsu Unahana. While traveling through the Garganta, Unahana tells Ichigo he is the only one who can possibly defeat Aizen because he is the main character. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's because Ichigo hasn't been exposed to Aizen Zanpakuto ability, Kanzen Simon, or Complete Hypnosis, which is initiated through looking at the release of Aizen Zanpakuto. This ability's influence is pretty much permanent and has the ability to hypnotize and manipulate all five senses. Unahana warns Ichigo to never look at Aizen Shikai, or in other words, Aizen Zanpakuto release. Moving forward, the Aron card get wiped out, Aizen's henchman Kaname gets killed, and Ichigo arrives in false Katakuta Town and goes to strike Aizen right off the bat. But it doesn't seem to be working out so well, and so the Visor and Soul Reapers help out the boy Ichigo. And ends up getting annihilated. Shizukani! Shizukani! With Ichigo being the final man standing, he goes up against Aizen once again. And this is when Aizen is like, check out my nipples, or, uh, I mean, my Hoguku I fused with. Which essentially gives Aizen fucking god mode. Aizen then continues spouting out some bullshit, saying that he has forged Ichigo's path all the way till now since the day he was born. This is when Daddy Kurosaki swoops in, and apparently he's a soul reaper. Shortly after, Gin arrives at the scene and takes on Ichigo while Ichigo's father Ishin takes on Aizen. As Ishin is fighting Aizen, Urahara and Yoriichi arrive to assist him in this battle. With Aizen being an OPS motherfucker, he then follows through and drills their cheeks with ease. Shortly after those ass drillings, Aizen then leaves with Gin to head to the real Katakuta town to forge the Oaken, leaving Ichigo, Ishin, Urahara, and Yoroichi alive. Bro, I think you forgot to finish off the main character. Moving forward, Ichigo's father gives Ichigo one of those powerful Naruto speeches, saying even though they are too weak to defeat Aizen, they can't just stand around doing nothing because everyone in Katakuta Town will inevitably be slaughtered. And so Ishin opens the Senkai Mon, enabling them to travel to the real Katakuta Town. As they are traveling through the Senkai Mon, Ishin notices the cleaner is no longer there in the Dongai. Essentially, the cleaner is there to kill anyone or anything from staying too long. And the cleaner is pretty much as durable as Diamond, but since Aizen got those OP hacks on, he destroyed that shit pretty easily on his way to Katakuta Town. With that being said, Ishin decides to take advantage of the time distortion in the Dongai to teach Ichigo the final Getsu Gatensho. And for those people who don't know the time distortion in the Dongai, I'm gonna tell you. Well, just look at it like this. One year outside the Dongai will equate to 2,000 years in here. So yeah, Ichigo kinda got a lot of fucking time on his hand. So moving forward a couple of episodes, Yin ends up turning on Aizen because apparently he and Rangiku were childhood friends and Aizen ended up harming her a long time back, making him plot his revenge the day he affiliated himself with Aizen. But things don't go as planned. 
Shortly after the death of Gein, the boy Ichigo makes his appearance and man did he get a buff after training that Don guy. Just look at this disrespect right here. You will. And so Ichigo and Aizen have their final showdown, resulting in Ichigo using the final Getsuga Tensho, smacking that bitch Aizen right in the mouth and taking him down. And to put the icing on the cake, Urahara uses his Kido to seal and apprehend Aizen. Knowledgeable of the repercussions for using the final Getsuga Tensho, Ichigo slowly loses his Soul Reaper powers and... Oh my god, for god's sake, another filler arc? Ah, oh, get this filler arc opening out of my face. Well, moving past those goddamn fillers, Ichigo has lost all of his spiritual energy, and so he says his farewells to and that is the end of Bleach. Uh, you know, there's actually more. Do I really have to go over the shit as arc? Do it for the anime in minutes. <sighs> well, apparently there's more. This is the final arc of Bleach. Sorry to say it, shit. So I will skim over this shit like no tomorrow. So with Ichigo no longer having spiritual energy, this guy hits him up like, Hey yo, you want your powers back? And Ichigo's like, Yeah, bro! So Ichigo unlocks full bring powers. Of course, that's after a series of tests that pushed his physical and spiritual capabilities. Just as Ichigo gets a mastery of his full bring powers, this guy turns on Ichigo and steals his powers. That's when Rukia appears behind him and stabs him with a special blade, giving him spiritual energy and his soul reaper powers back. With that being said, Ichigo beats that ass <laughs> And kills that bitch. Oh yeah, his name was Kugo Ginjo. For anyone who actually cares about that, uh, I mean, I don't know why you would, but yeah. So with that villain out of the way, Ichigo's Soul Reaper powers returned. We got the conclusion of Bleach. Or maybe not the true conclusion, because we still haven't gotten to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. But let's pray. Someday they will release it to the anime.